हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बीटेक फर्स्ट ईयर फिजिक्स कोर्स नाउ टुडे आई शैल डिस्कस अबाउट डाइवर्जेंस थ्योरम व्हिच वाज फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय कार्ल फ्रेडरिक गाउस अराउंड 19th सेंचुरी नाउ द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस थ्योरम इज दैट इट हेल्प्स टू अंडरस्टैंड द नेचर ऑफ द वेक्टर फील्ड इन मेनी एरियाज ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड इंजीनियरिंग such as in electrostatics magnetostatics electromagnetic field theory and also in fluid dynamics okay so let's understand the theorem it tells that the closed surface integral of the normal component of a vector field a which has continuous derivatives with respect to position coordinates will be equal to the integral of the divergence of the vector field taken over the volume bounded by the closed surface and in mathematical form we can write like this okay that means total flux of a vector field through a closed surface equals to the total divergence of the vector field over the volume enclosed by the closed surface so this is the divergence theorem of gauss now this can be easily proved and to do that let's consider a vector field of this general form then the flux of this vector field out of this cubical box of side a has to be found out now there are six surfaces on the box so to calculate the flux of this vector field we have to understand which surfaces contribute in pairs okay so first we have to consider this pair of surfaces s1 is actually x equal to 0 plane and s2 is x equal to a plane then s3 and s4 s3 is at y equal to 0 and s4 at y equal to a after that s5 and s6 at z equal to 0 and z equal to a respectively then the total flux of the vector field out of the cubical box will be sum of six terms one for each face right so let's calculate that for s1 s2 pair the flux will be like this so flux through s2 minus flux through s1 then for s3 and s4 flux through s4 minus flux through s3 and similarly for s5 and s6 pair flux through s6 minus flux through s5 right now why is this minus sign coming here because in each case the direction of the vector is opposite at opposite surfaces okay and total flux will be summation of all these terms now let's compute this volume integration using fundamental theorem of calculus and why are we considering this that will be clear soon now here different terms of this integral have colored differently to indicate which surface contributes to which term okay then for s1 s2 pair the volume integration takes this form here del a1 del x represents the space rate of change of a1 component with respect to x and del a1 del x dx gives us the differential of a1 keeping y and z fixed then after integration with respect to x the form will be like this this is the value of a1 at x equal to a and this is the value of a1 at x equal to 0 keeping y and z as variable similarly here this is the difference between a2 at y equal to a and a2 at y equal to 0 keeping x and z as variable and here this is the difference between a3 at z equal to a and a3 at z equal to 0 keeping x and y as variable right then 
if we add all the terms, interestingly, it is the total flux which we have already obtained in the previous slide. Right? Then the total flux is of this form. And it can be written like this component wise division also. Here, this I cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del z is actually called del operator. And we get del dot a vector similar to a vector dot b vector to arbitrary vectors. Only instead of first vector, we have del operator here. And total volume integration of that is like this. That means total flux of the vector field A through the closed surface of the cube is equal to the total divergence of the vector field over the volume enclosed by the closed surface. Right? So, as we have seen the proof of the Gauss's divergence theorem, let's verify that. For a vector field, A equal to 4xz i cap minus y square j cap plus yz k cap taken over a region of a cube of unit length along each side. So, to do that, first we have to calculate the total flux through all the six surfaces of this cube. Right? So, let's start with DEFG surface, which is this front plane. Now, the unit normal on this plane will be along x axis, which is I cap. And here, x equal to 1. Then after dot product with a vector, we get this 4z. Right? Now the limits of y and z vary from 0 to 1 as this is a cube of unit length. And after doing integration and putting the limits, we get this value. Then for a BCO surface, which is this back plane, n cap is minus i cap and x equal to 0. So, we get the integration value is 0. Next, for a, b, e, f plane, this one. Here, n cap is j cap and y equal to 1. So, we get this value, minus 1. Then, for o, g, d, c surface, this one at y equal to 0 n cap will be minus j cap, then the integration value will be this, 0. After that, for b, c, d, e at j equal to 1, n cap will be k cap along z axis, right? Then we get this value. And finally, for a, f, g, o, this surface. Okay? For that, n cap is minus k cap and here z equal to 0. See, this is the z equal to 0 plan. A f g o surface. Then the integration value will be 0. Right? Now, if we add all these values, we get total flux as 3 by 2. Now, you know the total divergence of the vector field over a volume enclosed by the closed surface is of this form. Here A1, A2, A3 are different components of vector A which is of this form in this particular problem. Right? Now, if we apply divergence on this vector field, it is simply doing differentiation of A1 with respect to X keeping Y and Z fixed. Then, of A2 with respect to Y, keeping X and Z fixed and A3 with respect to Z, keeping X and Y fixed. Okay? And we get this volume integration. Then after doing the integration and putting the limits, we get this value. And interestingly, it is the same value which we obtained as total flux. Right? So, Gauss's law is verified for this case. So, 
today i shall stop here in the next class i shall discuss about physical interpretation of divergence and related problems and solutions okay so thank you for attending today's lecture see you in the next class